Not sure how Danny roped me into this, but um, I'm really glad to be here. And the more I'm learning, the more excited I'm getting about um, what you guys are doing and just how, as a community, coming together and working towards um, just doing better, doing better for our communities, doing better for the things that you grow and raise. Um, tell you a little bit about myself, my husband, Steve Noble. Some of you may have met him, um, hopefully not in the clinic, but um, he's down in Oneida right now. But God brought us out here 25 years ago um, to South Dakota, and um, we've grown to love South Dakota and just really enjoy being here. Our oldest daughter is at University of Minnesota studying microbiology, and then our youngest is a junior here at Gettysburg High School. Um, but I'm here to talk to you today about um, my end of the spectrum of what you do. And that's about quality ingredients and quality food and what we put into our bodies. Um, God's kind of taken me on this journey. So I want to share the journey with you to help you understand how I've arrived where I am. Um, I grew up in Ohio. I was a townie. Um, but our community of 35,000 was surrounded by cornfields and dairy farms and had a lot of friends who um, lived and worked on farms and just really enjoyed. We would go out and visit. And I always had a fascination with, you know, your food comes from a chicken and it comes from a cow and the milk comes out. And, you know, just I knew where I grew up knowing where food came from. Um, my mom was a gardener, she was an excellent cook, and so we always had fresh fruits and vegetables, not to say that I always liked those. You know, growing up, you know, you don't always like the vegetables your mother gives you, but I also worked in a small grocery store. I had the privilege of working in a place where they butchered their own um, meat and stuff, and I learned to cut up chickens, and I learned to do all of that, not what most townies get to learn. But I was just really appreciated, and it's really cool to see all these little pieces throughout my life that God has brought us to this, this time. Then my education took me to Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, and um, I got a degree in business. And while getting my degree, I spent a semester in Kenya. And I was just fascinated, you know, in Kenya, the things that they grew and what was local and how culture and all of that comes together to produce what we eat. And uh, then I landed in Philadelphia, which is where I met Steve. And I was working with Cambodian, Laotian, and um, Vietnamese refugees. And so I got introduced to a whole other spectrum of food and um, what people eat and rice and all of those sorts of things. And then God miraculously, interestingly, brought us to South Dakota, which is a whole other story. Um, but my husband, Steve, just he embraces wherever he lives. And so he embraced hunting and fishing. You know, he works from nine to five. He's a wannabe farmer, um, but we don't have the money or the time for that. So um, he had, a, you know, just started a huge garden. And I found myself in South Dakota going, okay, now what? You know, what do I do? And so I had to learn to cook because all those fun foods that I had learned about, I couldn't get them out here. Now, I love steak, I love, you know, potatoes, I love bread, all of that, but I was looking for a little more variety, and so it's like, well, I guess I'm going to have to learn to cook, and you have to do it three times a day, you might as well like it. So that began my journey into cooking, um, but then God took us to Nepal, um, sandwiched between China and India, um, the giants of Asia, and... Um, it was a whole nother door opening up of, of different foods and different cultures and how those things come together. And um, just fascinating to me, we lived in Kathmandu for a while studying the language and fell in love with the local food, which is rice, um, a lentil kind of gravy and curried vegetables. Well, we moved out to the village and out in the village, you know, where the water's good, where Everything's grown locally. It comes straight from the garden, straight into the pot. Um, it just tasted better. And we always would amaze or, you know, just be amazed at, oh, the village food is just so much tastier, so much better. Um, there are subsistence farmers in Nepal, and so they were always fascinated that 
we came from South Dakota and what do they grow there? You know, what do they do there? And we're like, oh, well, they grow corn and they grow wheat and they grow soybeans and they raise cattle, which wasn't the best because they're Hindus and Hindus, it's a sacred cow. And so that was always a little touchy. So we danced around that one. But they were just fascinated that we had farms out here, you know, and that we kind of could connect a little bit with what, um, with what they did. Steve also took up beekeeping in Nepal. Um, they're big beekeepers, and um, so we just dove into the into life there and into the culture there. We moved back to Kathmandu, and I still had a hankering for for um, for good bread. And I would go to the store, and you could get white flour, and you could get wheat flour. You know, whole wheat flour. It's all you could get. And I tried my hand at bread baking, but it was just sort of a flop. It just didn't turn out very well. So. I discovered a neighbor introduced me to um, a local baker who was less than a block from my house. So I could get up in my pajamas and throw a sweatshirt on and I could walk over to my local bakery every morning and Lakshman in his tiny little brick room with a tin roof was pumping out croissants and bread and just all kinds of things. And we became fast friends. And I taught him to make bagels, because bagels were not available in Nepal. And um, we, we just you know, really connected. Well, then God brought us back to, uh, um, to South Dakota about two and a half years ago. And um, I was like, I'm going to make bread. I am sitting in the middle of some of the finest wheat fields in the country. I'm in the bread basket. I'm going to make bread. And I want to make you know, whole bread. So I asked. A friend, I said, hey, can I get some wheat? And he, so he gave me a bunch of wheat kernels and I ground it up and I made bread and it was terrible. And I was like, huh. All right. So, you know, I started, that began my quest for finding good flour. And I've, I've used um, Dakota Made, I've used um, Wheat Montana. And then before I left, where Danny disappeared to, before I left for Seattle at Christmas time, um, Danny said, oh, you're going to Seattle. You should try. Should get, see if you can get your hands on some shepherd's grain flour. So I was like, eh, I'll give it a try. So I looked and looked and looked and finally found some. And I brought back 100, 100, 150 pounds of flour and started making some bread after Christmas. And I was like, oh, this stuff is amazing. Like you could just tell, feeling it and, and making the bread and how the bread turns out. It's fabulous. And so that brings me to all of you. And I would just like to encourage you guys. Soil health does matter. Um, what you put into your soil does matter. Um, what you grow matters. You know, you can't get quality flour out of sub-quality wheat. It's just not going to happen. Um, and I think you guys know that. But no, you're not just growing a commodity. You guys are growing food. You guys are growing food that feeds us, that feeds our communities, that feeds, you know, the country. Um, I would love to see um, local flour available locally, you know, that we could use that's quality stuff. And that's not to say quality stuff isn't being grown and isn't being raised around here, because I know it is. Um, but I really want to encourage you guys and, you know, think about what you grow and how you grow it. And then when you, you look at the hunting and fishing, what you put on your crops, what you put out there on the soil does affect our wildlife, does affect the quality of our lives. And um, we've got a great place out here. We love it. We absolutely love it. We've got a big garden going. We've got, we're trying to do bees. Man, it's too cold for bees. But, um, but yeah, just um, what you guys do is important is really important. And I just want to continue to encourage you to, to do that. Um, that darn it, we could grow the best darn wheat out here and grow, raise the best darn cattle out here and that people would want what we have. Um, so anyway, I don't know if anybody has any questions, but that's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I've got some bread here for you guys to try. Yes. Let's okay. start with, this is the, and you know what? Just send that with. And when it runs out, I'll get you more. So if you ask questions, I'll cut. Well, you know what? I'm going to put some more in there because I don't think that's going to. Try this one. I'll put this one this You know one thing? Yeah. Before we get going here, Marcia, a lot of this bread is white wheat. It came from the Dakota Lake. 
And uh, that's what we're also going to get some, eventually, I told her I'd already have it done and I don't. I, if we're going to get some South Dakota, some Redfield wheat. She wants wheat. She wants wheat where she can mix. She wants to mix different wheat <laughs> to make a better bread. So the, she's also got some yeah, go ahead and take right, that. some of the shepherd's grain. I do. So the um, the light whole wheat has a mix of the Alice and the shepherd's grain. Um, the difference between um, the two that do not have shepherd's grain is that one is just a sifted Alice. I just took the Alice and sifted out some of the bran um, just to lighten it up a little bit and see how it did in just a straight flour, water, yeast, um, flour, water, yeast, and salt combination just to see how it would do. Um, the whole wheat one, the Alice whole wheat does have some vital wheat gluten in it, has some other, has a little bit of honey, has a little bit of milk in it, um, just to lighten that up a little bit. So you just to get a plate. And I know some of you guys bake, so I'm, you know, I don't know everything I'm learning. I'd love to hear more about what you guys do and how you do it and, you know, what you love about it, why you do what you do. Yeah. So, so she's asking, what's the difference between what's grown here in Central South? Oh, okay. Um, of what's grown here in Central South Dakota, and say what Shepherd's Grain does. And I think actually Danny can probably answer that better. But I know what Shepherd Shepherd's Grain does is they combine different wheats, and that's what I would like to learn more about. I'm not really sure. You know, I know that you look at the protein content. You know, um, but what other qualities are they looking for? Um, that's what I'm in the process of learning. You know, shepherd's grain, is, it, they've been around here. They've come back. And so I think this is, this, done, is done, this one. This one is, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here, here, do you want me to move my donut? Right quality of wheat. Go to the baker say, does this work? Does this work? Does this work? When you walk in a place <coughs> out there and you get shepherd's grain flour, you know it. And it, uh, so anyway, there's no reason why we can't do that here if we get to work on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you work with other grains other than wheat? Um, I do do rye. I do get a um, seven grain out. Uh, I think it's Great River. I'm not sure. Um, actually, you order it on Amazon. It's the only way to get their grain. Um, it's a corn, brown rice, millet, barley, wheat. There's seven of them. I forget what other two are in there, but oats and I don't know anyway I don't remember but um, yeah so I do do a seven grain peasant bread I said we should have communion I mean you know I don't want to offend anybody but thanks a lot Marcy we'll go yeah. ahead and keep rotating yep. the bread while we get the program going yep you guys get going just so everybody gets a bite of bread Thanks a lot, Marcy. Mm -hmm. You guys, this is Marcy's kitchen, but 